Hi, I'm Alan Stokel, and I'd like to tell you a story about the mystery of the Empress of Britain. Was there a fortune in gold held in her vault? Was there a conspiracy to secret, secretly remove the gold from the wreck? We may never know for sure, but that there was that rumor around when news came of the sinking of the Empress of Britain. Hi, this is World's Worst Maritime Disasters, the channel dedicated to report on maritime disasters. If you find this video interesting, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. According to Wikipedia, uh, work began on RMS Empress of Britain on the 28th of November 1928, when the plates of her keel were laid at John Brown and Company, Clydebank, Scotland. She was launched on the 11th of June 1930 by the Prince of Wales, of all people. This was the first time that uh, launching ceremonies in Britain were broadcast by radio to Canada and the United States. It is possible that the Empress of Britain was transporting gold from Cape Town to England, where it could be uh, then moved across to Canada and also to the USA, who at the time was profiting from the European war. It wasn't just rumor and innuendo. On the 8th of January 1949, the Daily Mail reported that a salvage attempt was to be uh, made in the summer of that year. There were no follow-ups and the story contained several errors. Yet more strange, in 1985 a potential salvager received a letter from the Department of Transport Shipping Policy Unit saying the gold on board had been previously recovered. The second and more salacious rumor has it that after the war, two or more of the crew of the Empress of Britain returned to the wreck to take that gold. The Empress of Britain left Southampton on her maiden voyage to Quebec on the 27th of May, 1931. As the ship would sail a more northerly transatlantic route in ice-infested waters off Newfoundland, the Empress of Britain was built up with outer steel plating, double the thickness at the bow, and for 150 feet, or 46 meters, back at either side, up to the waterline. Her sea trial showed her to be the world's most economical steamship. Her primary role was to get passengers between England and Quebec City instead of the more popular Southampton, New York route. The ship was designed to carry 1,195 passengers, of which 465 were first class, 260 were tourist class, and 470 were third class or steerage. She was the first passenger liner designed specifically to become a cruise ship in the winter when the St. Lawrence River was frozen. Empress of Britain was annually converted into an all-first-class luxury cruise ship carrying 700 passengers. For this role, her size was kept small enough to fit through the Panama and Suez Canal. Since speed was not as important on a cruise, two of the four engines were shut down and the two outboard propellers retracted to prevent drag. With four propellers, her speed during trials was 25.271 knots, or about 46 kilometers an hour, pretty good. Although her service speed was stated at 24 knots, or 44 kilometers an hour. As previously noted, making her the fastest ship from England to Canada. To serve as a beacon at night during emergencies, the three great funnels were illuminated with powerful floodlights. From the air, the funnels could be spotted from 50 miles away, and ships could spot the funnels from 30 miles away. The night before her maiden voyage, the Prince of Wales himself decided to go to Southampton to bid the bon voyage. 
His inspection of the ship caused a short delay, but on Wednesday, the 27th of May, 1931, the Empress of Britain left the docks at Southampton for Quebec. She made nine round trips in 1931 between Southampton and Quebec. In December of 1931, she sailed on a 128-day around-the-world cruise to the Mediterranean, North Africa, and the Holy Land, through the Suez Canal, into the Red Sea, and then to India, Ceylon, which we now call Sri Lanka, Southeast Asia, and the Dutch East Indies at the time, onto China, Hong Kong, which of course was a British protectorate at the time, and Japan, then across the Pacific to Hawaii and California before traversing the Pan Panama Canal back to New York. Nice! Her captain from 1934 to 1937 was Ronald Neal Stewart VC, First World War veteran, entitling the Empress to fly the Blue British Navy Ensign. In June 1939, the Empress of Britain sailed from Halifax to Conception Bay, St. John's, Newfoundland, and then eastbound to Southampton with her smallest passenger list. 40 people. King George VI, Queen Elizabeth, who we now call the Queen Mum or the Queen Mother, and 13 ladies and lords in waiting, 22 household staff, plus a photographer and two reporters. The royal couple and their entourage were comfortably settled into a string of suites. On the 2nd of September 1939, one day before the United Kingdom declared war and seven days before Canada entered the war, the Empress of Britain sailed on her last voyage for Canadian Pacific with the largest passenger list. Filled beyond capacity and with uh, temporary berths in the squash courts and uh, other spaces, the Empress of Britain zigzagged across the Atlantic to avoid U-boats arriving in Quebec on the 8th of September of 1939. Upon arrival, the ship was repainted gray for war service, and on the 25th of November 1939, the Empress of Britain was requisitioned as a troop transport. She did four transatlantic trips, bringing troops from Canada to England. My father was one of the soldiers that was on board at that time. Around 9.20 a.m. on the 26th of October 1940, traveling at uh, around 70 miles northwest of Ireland along the west coast, the Empress of Britain was spotted by a German Folkwolf FW200C Condor. Long-range bomber it was. The pilot strafed the Empress three times and struck her twice with 250-kilogram uh, or 550-pound bombs. Only after returning to base in northern France was it discovered which ship the bomber had attacked. A report was sent to German Supreme Headquarters. Realizing the significance of a uh, reconnaissance plane went out to verify it, and the German news agency reported that the Empress of Britain had been sunk. But despite the ferocity of the attack and the fires, there were few casualties. The bombs had started a fire that began to overwhelm the ship. At 9.50 a.m., Captain Sapworth gave the orders to abandon ship. The fire was concentrated in the midsection, causing passengers to head uh, for the bow and stern and hampering the launch of lifeboats. Most of the crew and passengers were picked up nearby by other ships. A skeleton crew remained aboard, the fire had left the ship unable to move under her own power, but she was not sinking, and the hull appeared to be intact despite a slight list. In the morning of the 27th of October, a party from HMS Broke went on board and attached tow ropes. The ocean-going tug HMS Marauder and the HMS Thames had arrived and took the boat under tow. 
The German submarine U-32, commanded by Hans Jinnisch, had been told of the Empress's distress and headed in that direction. They used passive sonar to find the ship. The Germans fired two torpedoes. The first detonated prematurely. The second hit, causing a massive explosion. Crews of the destroyer thought this was caused by the fires aboard the liner uh, finally reaching her fuel tanks. The U-boat fired a third to torpedo, which hit aft. The vessel began to fill with water and list heavily. The tug slipped the tow lines and on 2.05 a.m. on the 28th of October, the Empress of Britain sank northwest of Bloody Foreland, County Donegal, off Northern Ireland at 55, 16 degrees north, 0, 09, 50 degrees west. In a moment, the tale of a fortune of gold, which went down with the ship and then disappeared. An Irish Times reporter stated, The remains of the Empress of Britain lies off Tory Island, where she was sunk in October 1940. It was known at the time she had been carrying gold bullion. The British Empire was shipping gold to North America to improve its credit and pay war debts. In 1995, salvagers found Empress of Britain upside down in 500 feet or 150 meters of water. They found that uh, the fire had destroyed most of the decks, leaving a largely empty shell rising from the seafloor. The bullion room was still intact. When they opened the door, they got an eerie shock. The bullion room was empty, except for one occupant, a skeleton. It is believed he was trapped while working on the salvage of the gold cargo, but not when the ship sank. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. There is a theory that a 1949 clandestine expedition to the remains of the Empress secreted away the missing gold. Once refined, the gold could never be traced. Now the conspiracy theorists have started to take note. The Empress of Britain had recently birthed in Cape Town, South Africa. This ship was the second of three Canadian Pacific vessels named the Empress of Britain providing scheduled transatlantic passenger service from spring to autumn between Canada and Europe from 1931 to 1939. In her time, the Empress of Britain was the largest, fastest, and most, most luxurious ship carrying passengers between England and Canada. Theorists believe the skeleton is that of one of the crew who was double-crossed when the gold was stolen. There is no proof this is more than just a story, but if government divers recovered the gold, they would have retrieved the remains of their team member. Thank you for watching. If you found this interesting, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and check out my Patreon page, or just do one. Now remember, wearing a mask inside common areas protects others as they protect you. Fair winds, my friends, and stay safe.